April already? <laughs> what, what year is it? Pop quiz. Uh, I want to welcome you to the open forum. Uh, we have a robust schedule for you today, and as always, a few special guests. Look at that lineup. Woo! So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Our first speaker uh, for the open forum this month is Don Emery. Has everybody had an opportunity to meet Don, general manager for Gray Oaks Country Club? I see yes and no, so I'm so glad that Don is here. I'd like to introduce you to Don. Don and I have been working very closely together on a number of matters. Um, just so you know, um, the moment he arrived at Gray Oaks Country Club, uh, he reached out and we've met many times. He's worked on some little projects here and there on our behalf. He's toured here. Uh, I believe it was a week or two ago. We went through the whole property. We visited apartments. We explained everything that we do here. And we're just so thankful for the relationship that we're, we're building with Don and his team. So part of that includes presenting to the members. And there's some uh, projects that are happening this summer. We really thought it would be a good idea for you to hear about them and hear a little bit about what's going on at, at Gray Oaks Country Club. So welcome, Don. Good afternoon, and thank you again for the invite. It's, it's wonderful to be with you. Uh, just a quick, a quick personal story uh, that I want to share and how the partnership helps both of us. Um, we had the opportunity, Jared and I, Jared's our membership director, and we had the opportunity to tour the wonderful, wonderful campus over here. And just, just getting to know the staff a little bit better and getting to know that we are truly a partnership between Gray Oaks and Moorings Park at Gray Oaks. Uh, on a personal note, my mom is currently a resident at Chateau at Moorings Park. She uh, had a fall in our brand new house. and. Uh, three days in, and so she's being taken well care of by the folks down there, and a personal thank you to Jordan and all the staff that makes her, her life right now very comfortable, and I get to, get to sneak in at 10 o'clock at night and leave little notes for her, so thank you for allowing me to do that. But I know it's not Mooring Parks at Gray Oaks, but it's part of the family, so thank you so much. I uh, wanted to give you an update on some things that are happening. And first of all, we'll start with the fun things. We'll start with the social activities. And about mid-May to the third week of May, you will all be getting a new newsletter. We did a special edition of our newsletter. We're calling it Summer Connections. And it will have all the activities in sports, in dining, in health and wellness for June, July, August, and September. But I wanted to highlight a few things uh, we're starting a brand new uh, item this summer. We're having happy hours down at the Pool Cafe. On Thursdays, we will have uh, specialty cocktails, complimentary hors d'oeuvres, and music. And that's going to start at 5 o'clock. We'd love to have you as part of that and come over and visit. Uh, some traditional items, a Memorial Day cookout. We're doing a poolside bash on the 12th of June. And we're doing something on June 26 with our chef from the estuary. And uh, Chef BJ, many of you know, and uh, I am a big fan of Chef BJ and the food at the estuary. And he is doing what he's calling an inspired dinner. He's picked some chefs that have inspired him in his life. And he's cooking food with their recipes from their restaurants, uh, including Thomas Keller. And it's just going to be a nice evening. Uh, that's going to be on the 26th from 5 to 8. Um, we always get some questions about why do we, we close down the estuary campus during the summer, and I'm happy to note that this year, announced in the newsletter that will be coming out, we will be opening estuary for lunch for the month of June, and we're going to be doing some pop-up dinners during the month of June at the estuary campus as well. So please uh, read your newsletter when you get it. Look at your weekly uh, e-blast that Jared sends out, and we will be trying very hard to use the estuary campus throughout the summer. Part of the reason that we have to delay a little bit on using the estuary campus has to do with some investment that we're making. Um, the board and myself truly realize the importance of the estuary campus as part of our larger Gray Oaks campus. And this year, I wanted to highlight 
some things that we're doing specifically at the estuary. Most of you have received the facilities update that we sent two weeks ago. Then this week we sent a grounds update, but I wanted to highlight a few items going on on this side of Airport Pulling Road. The heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, HVAC, old and sort of unreliable on the estuary side. So we're taking it off the roof. They'll see a big crane for a couple days working with us. Uh, they'll be putting a new HVAC system on the roof, making the, the uh, entire clubhouse uh, a better experience for people dining with us and using the locker rooms. Uh, speaking of locker rooms and not on the list because we don't have the date yet, we're going to be taking up the carpet. We're going to be doing some work in the locker rooms and putting new carpeting down in the locker rooms as well. Probably the most visible is going to be the parking lot. Um, after almost falling my second week at the estuary parking lot, we decided it was a good idea to redo the whole parking lot. No, it was, it was on the schedule. I'm just kidding. It was on the schedule. And uh, we're going to be, it's going to be a messy project. There are smells that happen with when you put down, uh, um, when you put down pavement, there's dust. Uh, we are going to take up all of the pavement. We're going to re-pitch the parking lot for drainage purposes, and then we'll put a, a new, new uh, asphalt down. So that's going to happen the third week of May through the first week of June. And I'll be in touch with Jordan as to specifically what days are going to be kind of the bad days because when they're grinding asphalt and things like that, noisy and dusty and probably not a good idea to open the windows on those days. So we'll be in contact and, and uh, in communication with that. The good news is at the end of it, not only are we going to have a new parking lot, but Juan, our grounds maintenance director, is going to come in and he's going to rip out all of the plants and shrubs and things that were looking a little tired in that area, and we're going to redo the parking lot area for plantings as well. So we have some social activities coming up, and we encourage you to look for your newsletter coming out in the middle of May. We'll be doing some construction projects throughout the whole campus, but we're specifically putting money into uh, the estuary campus this summer. Um, and that's the extent and excitement of my report. I, 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 wow, it's, it's so anticlimactic to get to, the, to get to that point. But I truly want to, I want to tell you how much we do value all of you and your membership in Gray Oaks and the fact that we talk to each other probably once a week, which is probably one time more than Jordan wants to. But we talk, we, we, we have a good relationship. And I just want you to know that that's something that we think is very valuable to both, both campuses. So thank you. Thank you, Don. We're so pleased that you're able to join us today. Uh, next, uh, it's been a while since Betsy was here to provide a foundation update. Yeah, so uh, uh, we wanted to invite Betsy to give an update. There's been a lot of great movement within the foundation, and uh, we're so pleased that she's here. The up, down buttons. Remember, Jordan, I sent you 13 slides, and you said no. Shorter. So I cut it down to nine, and he said no. Four. So you get to click that four times. Okay. <laughs> go. Oh, no, no. Don't, don't go backwards. All right. Okay. First of all, for those of you who are new at Great Oaks, and some of you might be, I'm not sure. My name is Betsy Jones, and I'm the staff member for the foundation. I have an annual report for you if you don't have one of these that tells you all about what your foundation does for this community. It's one foundation serving all three campuses. The official office is on the other campus next to Mr. Lavender's office. And I am mostly going to use my four slides to show you some pictures of all of the people who are involved in the foundation. So we'll start with the first one. Click. OK. <laughs> I have to start right here because it, it's just with great love and sadness that we had to say goodbye to this dear, dear man last week. The week. Two weeks before, he had made one of the largest gifts to the foundation ever. And she, Barbara, and him, Dick, are going to do enormous things for our partners through educational opportunities. And we're so grateful to both of them. They also, with their gift, finished the Senior Peak Challenge for the year. 
So that was our million dollar appeal. Don't think we have another one planned necessarily for the year. And it was to cover our giving plan for the year, which is under full swing right now being implemented. Before we go to the next one, I just wanted you to know that that was a $500,000 match by the Sheffields. And for those of you who contributed to it, thank you very much. We are well above the goal. And because of that goal, we're going to increase the grant budget, which is good because right now, last year, the budget was about $400,000 for community grants. And we just got applications in and the total ask is $800,000. So it's a lot of need out there. And uh, the 27 applications will be reviewed by a committee of residents, two from each campus, and they're about to do a lot of really hard work. But, oh, the needs are, they're pretty amazing. And thank you for touching so many lives through that. All right, let's see what's next. This is the Scholarship Selection Committee, led by your own Bob DeKemper on this campus, and also a part of it from this campus is Ann Allison. Jane Borchers from Grand Lake, Liz Jesse, and, and Bob Levine are both from Gray, uh, the original campus. And I want you to know that the letters went out last week. Are you here, Mr. DeKemper? Oh, <laughs> I, I've seen that dog. <laughs> Had a conversation with that dog at lunch today, or about that dog. Um, but anyway, the letters just went out. So there are 30 extremely happy people around campus. That adds to last year's 30. So you in this room are helping to put 60 of your employees and their family members through college right now. So you deserve a huge pat on the back. <laughs> Yay, you. Grants Review is also led by someone from this campus. Are you here today, Mr. McCarthy? No. Dennis McCarthy is chairing that, and he's a super chair. Uh, those are our members. Mr. Clark. Mr. Uh, Derliat, who's from Grand Lake. Linda Leatherberry, who's from the Pet House, also has a cute dog, she's probably sitting. And uh, Mr. Rakowski is from the original campus, and Mrs. Schneider, Karen Schneider, if anybody knows Karen from around. Uh, they're all very experienced in this, so they're going to do a really good job of siphoning through this huge list of grant applications and making the awards so that we're stewarding your money well. Okay. Um, we just had a meeting last week when they upped that grants budget, which is a huge thing. And we had to say goodbye now to two of our members, three of our members who have been serving. Dudley Lyons is actually timing out. Are you here, Mr. Lyons? He's actually timing off of the board and he's contributed a lot as our secretary treasurer. Jim Jesse is also timing off and that's his wife. Uh, at the event that they chaired on the other campus, he'll still remain as the Mission Support Committee Chair, which is good, that overseeing grants and scholarship. And then Eileen, who many of you know from the Community Foundation, is also rolling off. And coming in is our new board. Ta -da -da. Click. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, Alan Horton will stay the chair. Mr. Sheffield is actually emeritus, which means he doesn't vote, but he stays on. Um, it's a great big honor because he's only given us a million dollars or so. Um, Glenn Gronland, Dolly Corist, Pat Schneider, Bob Transu, and from here, Gary Kaufman. Are you here, Mr. Kaufman? Oh, hi, Gary. Uh, Dennis McCarthy, Chuck Waterman. Nope. And then from Grand Lake, I don't know if any of you know Dave Rutstein from his work at the Naples Senior Center. Or Beverly Corrin, who's also involved in Guadalupe Center and other places. And then, of course, Dan Lavender's the CEO of all of it, and he is the head of the foundation. I also wanted to really quickly mention that you're having a phenomenal year at the foundation for ever since I've been here, I think. Since that first year, we've had three members of the Orchid Society, which is our $50,000 giving level from this campus the Turners, the Kurtzes, and the Naylors. Now, suddenly, you have five new members. So you're really contributing massive amounts to what you're doing in this community, and I appreciate that. And I wanted just to welcome for in front of everybody the Kaufman family, Lyons, Glowaki, Habeka, and Waterman families for joining those. And then also, on a, also yes, sir Thank you. Then I also wanted to mention that there are also 
some of you who have done an enormous future gift, and we so thank you for that, and that is Linda Leather Leatherberry, uh, the Lions, and the Cane Zigs, and we are so greatly appreciative. And that's all, I think. Yep. <laughs> thank you so much. I can talk longer on your own time, anytime. <laughs> that's why we did four slides. <laughs> Uh, but seriously, um, some of the residents know this, but I'm uh, a graduate of the Chamber of Commerce Leadership Collier Class of 2020. Jessica is um, currently enrolled in the Chamber of Commerce Leadership Collier Class of 2021. And part of that class, we're given the opportunity to learn about our community, um, all the different agencies that support people in need, whether it's the Senior Center or the Healthcare Network or the Guadalupe Center. Um, there's, there's countless agencies and organizations in our community that serve the underserved. And I think one of the things that has stood out for me the most is all the different ways that Moorings Park, through the foundation, supports these agencies through your giving, your generosity. I tell you, I walk a little straighter as I go through those classes and I, and I see the Moorings Park name and I hear the Moorings Park name. Um, just knowing that our residents are part of that, it, it really means a lot. Whether, whether you've given of your time or your, your funds, I just want to personally thank you and just tell you how proud I am to be here and amongst each and every one of you. So next up, we have Amanda Addison. Um, Amanda needs no introduction, so I'll just give her the microphone. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, you're not going to click for me? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. Hello. Good afternoon. Uh, I will introduce myself again, though. I'm Amanda Addison, the licensed clinical social worker. A lot of your faces are becoming really familiar to me, so that's really exciting. So I'm still hoping to continue to get to know everyone. And if we haven't met yet, I hope that we get to meet soon. I just have a couple announcements I wanted to share with you today. Oh, oh there's my contact information. It was sent out in a blast last month. Thank you, Teresa. All right, so I just wanna remind everyone that we are continuing our caregiver support group. That is here in this room every first Friday of the month from 11 to noon. And that group um, is for anyone that is caring for a loved one. We welcome you to that. It is a confidential group. And we also welcome our Grand Lake caregivers. So far, it's been going really well, and um, if you ever have any questions about the group or would like to attend, we ask that you contact Bree, the RSVP, but we are very happy with how it's been going, and we hope that it's beneficial to everyone. All right, so some of you may have seen a little flyer that I've created that's been going out in the newsletter, and one of the things that's important that we talk about is mental and emotional health, and sometimes we don't talk about it enough. So I have created a flyer because we have an opportunity to possibly start a group support group on Saturdays facilitated by a licensed clinical social worker. Her name is Farah. And she currently sees uh, many of our residents here for individual counseling. So she has offered to facilitate this. So I would like to assess um, how many participants we would have for this group to see if it can be created. Um, so if you have any questions about that, please give me a call. I can go through more details with you. It would be on Saturdays and the location would be uh, to be determined depending on our participants. So far, I have one, so I need a few more before we can start that. But it is a really nice group, and it has been offered in the past, and it, it was successful prior to COVID, so we're hoping to get that back up and running soon. On the other side of that, sometimes talking in a group isn't always comfortable for everyone, so we do have individual counseling opportunities here as well. Farah, our license, uh, a licensed clinical social worker that we work with is here on Saturdays and she sees many residents for one-on-ones. She does accept insurance and there are different timing between nine and two that she is here. And then also we have the Rizzi Psychiatric Associates that are also here and they have nurse, um, psychiatric nurse practitioners that can review your medications and offer also that uh, psychosocial support. So if you're interested or want any more information on that, please give me a call. I would love to talk through the various options with you and see how we can best meet your needs. 
All right, and my last update, I am very excited to announce that we are collaborating with David Lawrence Center on a presentation on the psychological impacts of COVID-19. Um, there are so many different ways that COVID has affected each and every one of you. So this is gonna be a really great presentation on how to continue living through COVID-19. And they're also gonna do a question and answer session in hopes of also being able to share what resources they can offer you um, individually and to Moorings Park. So we're really excited for this collaboration. It's gonna be May 21st, it's a Friday from two to three in this room. So there's no RSVP needed. I'm, I will put out a flyer, but I really hope that you all attend. And if you have any questions regarding it, please let me know. All right, thank you. Campus Life. Thank you, Amanda. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. I will be quick, too. So I'm Ishelle Swanson. For any new resident that might not know me, but I hope that you do, because I do plan all your fun events. Um, so we have a wonderful upcoming party uh, on Wednesday, May 5th. That's Cinco de Mayo. Uh, it will be 5.30 to 8 p.m. And it's complimentary three-course dinner, complimentary margaritas and beer. We are hoping that we can do it outside here in the West Rooftop Garden, if weather permits. If not, then we will have it indoors at both the Bines and the 105. Um, we will have regular takeout menu for those that don't want to attend. You can just uh, call the number uh, that you always call, and uh, pickup will be at 5 p.m. instead of 5.30, that normally is. It is sold out as of right now, which is great news, but what does that mean? The reason why we limited the amount of seating for this event is, again, because of the weather. If we were able to know what the weather will be that day, then we will be able to have as many attendees as possible. Having said that, we don't know what the weather will be like, so in order to be able to accommodate everyone comfortably in both the dining venues, we decided to limit the attendance by, uh, to 70 attendees only. This is only going to affect us during the summer months because, again, weather uh, is very unpredictable here in Florida. But as the weather starts to get nicer, then we'll be able to do more events outdoors where there will be no limit on attendance. Um, again, both dining venues will be closed that day. So if you um, did not get on the list, it's OK. Let us know if you still want to attend. We'll put you on a wait list. Things happen and people cancel all the time. So we can, uh, if someone cancels, we can give you a call and let you know if, uh, if we have room. Uh, again, regular menu available for takeout orders. And if weather cooperates, we'll do the event outdoors. We will have live music as well. Uh, summer activities. Renaissance Academy, they offer wonderful lectures and presentations. Uh, throughout COVID, they were doing them all online, but I'm happy to announce that as of June, they will be coming and do presentations in person. So that is wonderful to hear. Uh, we will continue to offer as many lectures and presentations and events in general during the summer. So just because it's the summer months and a lot of you leave doesn't mean that things change for us. Uh, we still continue to offer as many presentations, lectures, events, anything uh, that, I, that I normally do during the season months, uh, we will continue to do during the summer. So all of you that will stay with us for the summer, don't worry, I have a lot of stuff planned for you. Most of the outings, the trips that we do outside of the community during the summer months will be places that are indoors. So you'll see a lot of trips to new restaurants, museums, and whatnot. And this is, again, because it, it gets very hot during the summer, so we try to avoid any outdoor uh, venues. But if you ever have any recommendations on places that you think we should uh, visit, please let me know. Please let know uh, any of the committee members from the activities committee, and they'll share that information with me. If you share an idea and it, if it doesn't happen right away, just know that we have that. Uh, we create a list with all the ideas that we get. And when we think it's the appropriate time, we might do it. So if you suggest let's do a visit to the Botanical Gardens in July, 
I might push it to December when it's a little cooler. So just know that if you suggest something, it doesn't happen right away. That doesn't mean that we're just ignoring it. It just means that we might just be pushing it to a later month. And please remember to fill out departure forms if you plan on leaving us for the summer or for long periods of times. The departure forms are available on the resident website. But if you have any questions, let me know, give me a call or shoot me an email. We have a few outings coming up in the month of May. We're gonna go to uh, Hogfish Harry's. I actually checked it out and it was really good, uh, really good seafood. Uh, we're gonna visit the Sarasota Classic Car Museum. And we're gonna visit Lulu's Kitchen, which if you have not heard, it's part of St. Matthew's House. It's a full service restaurant. Um, so this will be very interesting and it's great to support St. Matthew's uh, all the time. Uh, one thing I forgot to put on the slides, but we will be putting on the weekly newsletter, we will be doing another food drive. I know that one was done back in November, so we figure why not do another one now that a lot of you will be leaving us for the summer. I know you have a lot of things in your pantry that you might want to get rid of, so we will be doing another food drive. More information will come out on the weekly newsletter this week. And uh, I think this is very interesting. We're going to have a new series on Mondays, starting uh, Monday, May 17, and it covers the history of Collier County. Uh, the, after that, the next Monday, we will have the history of Everglades. Uh, don't ask me to pronounce the next one, Chokowski, <laughs> and Marco Island. So I encourage all of you to attend our Monday series. It's just something different, something fun, and you'll learn a little bit about where you live. And with that being said, I will pass the microphone to Danny. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Before we start, isn't it great to have Danny back? We're so glad that you're back. I missed everybody. You're the reason I came back. <laughs> Alrighty, well, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet and I know that'll be a first. So, <laughs> um, oops, I'm going the wrong direction. Yeah, let's go this way, there you go. First off, I'd like to thank everyone for being so kind when you're inviting your guests from the other campuses to come and be prepared to have their COVID cards or be known that they have that responsibility to bring it or have it on their phone I thank you very much for having it because it makes my job a whole lot easier and I hope it makes you feel a whole lot safer and for when reservations are coming up we have some special requests for outsides if anybody would you know has a, a query whether or not it's too hot on the day once you've made that reservation for outside please give us advance notice if you'd like to move inside or vice versa going outside it makes it so that I can deliver great service for you and you don't have to wait in the interim while I'm setting another table up. And mark your calendar, Cinco de Mayo. I think that uh, Michelle covered everything on that, but uh, yeah, as far as I'm looking forward to help facilitating it, we call it Cinco de Drinko. So if we, can, if, we, if, we can, if we can get that party started, I'm here to facilitate it with you. And then I would like to have you be ready for Mother's Day, which is the following Sunday, which is going to be on the 9th. The menu will be on the neighborhood by the end of the week, and so that everybody can take a, 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 a look at the menu. But reservations are available now, so if anybody has gone in, because I had a couple of, of people uh, requesting that they couldn't get reservations, I double-checked on Resi. It is set up. It is from uh, 12 to 3, so you can go ahead and make those reservations on there. I'm all set and ready to go for you. But with all my heart, I, you are the reason that I came back to do what I do, because you made my recovery easy. But anyways, I wanted to say thank you, and that's about all I've got. Um, if there's anything else, give me a call. You all have my phone number. Thank you, Danny. OK, Karen. We always like to give a little update on the sales and marketing, so you know what's going on here and then abroad their sister communities. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you all. Um, all right. I get the, there we go. So um, just to give you an update on the sales, uh, Moorings Park Gray Oaks occupancy is at 95%.
We've got four residences that are under refurbishment, and you'll be seeing some new move-ins. So make sure you look at the neighborhood website and see. I see some new faces that are in the room today. Um, and that's kind of exciting to have the new residences, residents coming in. Um, Oakstone ALMC uh, assisted living is currently at 92%. Um, also, last week we hosted a sip, saver, and all that jazz prospect event over at the Great Oaks Country Club, which was wonderful. Great event over on the veranda and met with some nice prospects. Um, that live in the, the Gray Oaks Country Club interested in learning more about Moorings Park at Gray Oaks. So that was, that's, uh, was a really wonderful event. And tomorrow we have another event focusing on GEO right here in the ballroom. It'll be a lunch and learn event. Um, our sister property, Moorings Park at Grand Lake, um, buildings L, M, and O have just opened for sales in 2021. Um, and then they're currently hosting hard hat tours over at GL. Uh, at the Moorings Park Original Campus, we're currently at 88% with seven uh, additional possessions that will be by mid-June. So um, we have, as far as Gray Oaks availability, we have one apartment, the Verde D302, that is pending. So we've got that on hold right now. Um, if you have any friends or people that might be interested in learning more about Moorings Park at Gray Oaks, I would love to meet with them, give them some information on uh, life care, give them a tour of Gray Oaks. And uh, my contact information is right there. Thank you so much. Thanks, Karen. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I just have a couple of updates today. Myself. All right, I have an update on the Grand Place North and South Lobby entrance enhancement. Um, unfortunately, we still, uh, our vendors are, still have a backlog on the delivery date for the tile and the carpet. Uh, once that's installed, that project will be completed. Um, I believe they're having problems at the Port Authority, the backlog, and so forth. Um, as always, once I get information, I'll send a memo out to all our, to our community. Our decorative vase and plant program, um, you know, for those that don't know, we have these blue ceramic vases on six of the buildings on the airport building side, and we have some decorative vases by the bistro area and all along the elevator lobbies of Grand Place, the penthouses. Uh, Morins Park sent out an RFP request for proposal to multiple vendors, and a uh, vendor was selected. Um, the company's name is called Simply Think. Next week, our current service provider will be re removing their vases, so there will be a period of time where those spaces will be unoccupied. Um, but rest assured, the, the new vendor, Simply Think, will uh, replace those vases with their uh, product. All right, outdoor bench cushions. Um, obviously, I'm sure all of you know that those bench cushions were removed. Um, the cushions have been ordered. Uh, like any other product in nowadays, things are a little bit behind. Uh, these are manufactured in California. They've, the last we heard was about a four-week wait time. Um, they have produced one for us, which is in that picture over there. Um, I think they have enough material to produce another four. Um, so as soon as Alex finds out she's heading that project, um, we will we'll let the community know. In addition to that, I do have a, a four to two capital project to um, purchase additional benches. Um, provided that are uh, in stock, so I'll let you guys know. <laughs> All right. So these special requests. So I do have a request uh, for the safety of our janitors that collect uh, the garbage from A3L buildings. Um, it was brought to my attention that uh, glass items have been thrown from your individual trash chute unit. If we can stop doing that, 
uh, that we greatly appreciate it. Um, so our janitors uh, can clear the trash. A lot of times they re are removing it with their hands, so we, we just want to keep that in mind, please. Oh, what happened? Oh, I know what the slide's about. This is all the problems that we have at Moran's Park at Grey Oak. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Wishful thinking. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Yeah, it comes the fun part of my presentation. One of the problems we have is cane toads. All right. So, a little bit of my comedian side, or maybe not. <laughs> how did cane toad? How did how did the cane toad die? Anybody got an answer? <laughs> I do not have any wine prizes for anybody, so <laughs> he simply croaked. <laughs> Uh, I feel a little bit optimistic now. I can keep, uh, maybe I keep, I'll keep my day job. <laughs> All right, a little bit fun facts. Last year, uh, Ray the Trapper rounded up 224 cane toads in 2020. That's pretty impressive. Um, <laughs> yeah, you don't win anything, Brett. <laughs> uh, Ray will be commencing his round starting May with the rainy season coming up. All right, and I believe that's all I have. All right, Brett. Hello, everyone. How is everyone this afternoon? Awesome. awesome. This kind of looks like the pool class this morning. Full. Um, so it's great to be here in front of all of you today. I have a couple things that I wanted to share with you. First is I hopefully all of you by now have met our new exercise specialist, Louis Sao. He started on Monday, so I'm very excited uh, for his arrival. I think he's going to be a great addition to the team. Uh, if you haven't met him, you will. He'll be doing a little bit of everything like all of us uh, do in the wellness department. So um, uh, look forward to seeing him for sure. He is the one who took over Michaela's position, so he is full-time, uh, just so all of you know, because uh, I had some people, you know, obviously our intern just ended, and, you know, we have so many interns come through. Uh, he is not an intern. He is a full-time exercise specialist with us, so very excited about that. I will also, I just want to say, even before he started, funny little story, he, um, you know, I had started announcing to some of the residents who, you know, we were bringing in and what his name was, and the first thing I got not was like, what's his experience? What's, they're like, well, Brett, does, does he have a different name? Does he, can you shorten his name at all? I was like, I, I don't think, I don't know, I'll ask him, but I think his name's Louis Al. So Monday morning, too, he comes in. I'm like, hey, Louis Sal, you know, I'm just wanting, you know, do you go by, do you got any nicknames? Do you got any other names? No, Brett, it's Louis Sal. Okay. Today, he goes, Brett, I just want you to know, I've been with these residents three days, and now my name is Louis, Louis, and Big L. <laughs> so you all got to him. So, so call him whatever you want. <laughs> so, but uh, I think he's going to be a great addition. He's going to be able to do a lot for us. Um, so I really, today, I really just want to take a step back and really look at what we have done and been able to accomplish this year so far. So a little snapshot. You know, we always strive to do more and more. And we don't just try to do more and more just to say we're doing more and more. We really want to make sure we're doing new things that are creating value, engagement, and really helping you age successfully. So we really do plan as much as we can for what our next steps are and what we are really trying to achieve. So looking back, and you know, there was a lot of challenges uh, with how we had to program things through COVID. We kind of came through that and starting in January, we saw a lot more attendance and really building um, the whole year uh, up until now. And I know some of you are gonna be leaving now, but like Michelle said, we're not gonna slow down. We're gonna keep adding as the summer months come. Uh, come. But looking back, what we have done, uh, we started a couple new classes that are now permanent on our schedule, which is to the core. So for those of you that are still unfamiliar with what that is or have not taken that class, it's all for your abdominals, your lower back, the muscles around your spine. And so it's a little bit more of an advanced class. We've heard that over the years. We've tried to do a few of those things and we didn't get much attendance. We tried to kind of rebrand it, re-put it out there. And I think to this point, it's been a huge success. So very excited about that class that is now permanently on the schedule. 
And also, we identified, you know, one of the classes that was very popular, but we knew because of the way things are now, um, we needed to tweak it a little, and that was our uh, circuit class. So a general circuit training class is you go from one station to the next, and obviously now with us cleaning as much as we are, trying to, you know, keep this virus out of here, we said, well, that doesn't really make sense, having residents go from station to station using equipment that a resident just utilized. So we kind of, we brainstormed and we said, well, how about still creating that model of going from station to station, but literally the residents are kind of in their own little box, you know, and that's what we did. So for that class, you have a lot of different equipment um, that you use, but you're the only one kind of using it. And, and we kind of try to vary it as much as we can, but we, we keep it very, you know, engaging and, and we kind of, um, you know, change it up on you a lot and you're kind of using your own equipment per se. So I think that has been a huge success and that's something that's pretty much going to stay on the calendar as well. And I just want everybody to know, because then we get a lot of requests too. We get a lot of people saying, oh, I, I wish you had maybe this class again on the schedule, or, you know, we can try this. And as you know, as we've shown, we are going to do that. But I just want you all to know our commitment and what we do upstairs. Um, so just as much as we look at independent living and how we want all of you to age successfully, we still want to take care of all of our residents in Oakstone and Mangrove. So... I, I'm happy to say right now, if you look at what our schedule is up there, we teach 15 exercise classes a week. For, um, that's combined with third and fourth floor. So I think that's pretty an outstanding job of the team. Yeah, thank you. To, to show that commitment and really not just say, you know what, we're going to have one of, the, even though the activities assistants do a fantastic job of what they do, a lot of facilities kind of have the activities assistants run a fitness program or, you know, most of the time play a video. We're up there. Our team is up there um, devoted to those residents creating the best living environment for them to help keep them at the level that they're at or even raise them a little bit higher. So some of the new things we added for them uh, that is new this year, we added a Monday Jamboree. So it's a fun event uh, every Monday that we get together with the residents on the third floor and we do all different types of activities. It doesn't just have to be picking up a weight. So fun, creative things, but it's led by our team, keeping them engaged and active. And very similar, but on the fourth floor, it's called For Fun's Sake. So as the name kind of says, whatever, whatever's fun that day and whatever those uh, residents really are going to see value in, that's what we're going to try to provide, and that's what we do for that day. And that could change, um, you know, based on, you know, the level of those residents that day. But, um, but I'm very excited about what we've been able to do up there. And then also, not only just the stuff on the calendar, that's, these are fitness classes, but outside the box, right? So many different dimensions of wellness. So really trying to be more committed to the different events every month. So that's why we've done things um, uh, like the mindful, uh, mindful Moments, which is a meditation class that we do. We're, we're doing that once a month. Uh, the new thing also that we just started was the little things, which we just did last week, which I think was a huge success. The idea behind that is, you know, in life, sometimes it is just the little things that matter, you know, and coming together and, and bringing that out. So we did the, the 50s. For those of you that were there, it was a big turnout. For those of you that were not there, um, those of you that went can, can share. Um, but we are planning on being out of the box, creative for the next couple months. So stay tuned uh, for what we have in store for that. Um, and just some other things. We've done the community-wide uh, March Madness bocce tournament that was a lot of fun. Uh, and then we gave a presentation on myofascial release, which is also uh, foam rolling that we can do here in the facility. So I won't go too much into it here. But from that presentation, it's another opportunity to potentially do a class out of it. So we're, we're looking into that. And just a couple other things for the future, uh, along with maybe some of that foam rolling uh, activities or class, uh, maybe we bring back the TRX class that we started right before COVID hit, 
and then we had to postpone that. So we are looking now at, at programming another uh, TRX style class. Uh, and then more fun events, uh, like the little things, like more of the residents and partner get togethers. We are currently planning that. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And, and we're gonna keep you engaged uh, all summer long. So I'm very excited for all of you that are staying this summer and um, look for a good time. So thank you very much and look forward to working with you all. Thank you, Brett. Okay, a little project update. Uh, the, as, uh, as Mark mentioned, uh, we have uh, a project earmarked for the entrances from within the garage to the different lobbies. Uh, the lobby by the stairs and then the lobby by where Gina is and we're waiting on the tile. We've heard that the tile is actually at the port. I just don't know which port. <laughs> So um, as soon as that is here, we'll get the project started. Building D drainage. If you'll recall, um, in the rainy season, we have a, a water backup issue um, stemming from what we think is a pipe, which was, you know, when it was built, it was built to code. But we think that now that the code has changed, it makes more sense. Um, the water is basically hitting a wall, and then the water backs up into uh, the floor drains in the garage and the, the second floor, which is actually your first floor of residences. We believe that we've identified a solution, but we don't quite know. And we won't know until we complete a mock-up, which is we select one building, we put the solution in place, and we see how it performs. So we're going to start that. We've actually just notified the contractor that he has approval to move forward. Uh, we will be uh, conducting that mock-up in, in Building D. There will be cutting in the, uh, the cement floor. Uh, the cars will, will, you know, we'll communicate with Building D on what to do and when, but just so you know, we're going to start the project, and then we're going to see how this solution, hopefully, performs throughout the rainy season. If we find that it's successful, then we'll move towards funding the following year during the dry season, hopefully, and uh, you know we'll, we'll roll that out throughout the rest of building A through L. You're probably wondering where we stand with the rubber walkway replacement. We're getting close, uh, so close in fact, we've identified the rubber product and we've identified the landscape architect. The architect has sent out an RFP request for proposal to a number of contractors to complete the hardscapes. And those contractors will be on site. You'll probably see them over the next week. That is because they need to return their bids to us no later than May 10th. And we will make a selection once we have received them. These are, most of these contractors are, are folks that we're familiar with. They're familiar with our property as well. I think that's a benefit to everybody. So once we have that in place, we'll move towards funding those, um, the, their bid. And then we also have permitting. This is a, a project that will require permitting. And so we will be at the mercy of the city slash county. Um, and we're hoping to get this project uh, started in the summer. We don't have a date yet. But I want you to know, I know it's, it, it's kind of hard when you don't see much happening um, in the front of the house, so to speak. There's a lot happening in the back of the house with all these meetings, site tours, and working with these contractors and uh, we hope to begin in the next few months. This is just a reminder. I know nobody wants to hear it, but it's just around the corner, hurricane season. Uh, so we just wanted to put that little teaser out there to remind you that it's coming. It's very important for you to start thinking about that. Make sure that you have your supplies in your apartment. Of course, we will have a hurricane training. We do that every year. We go over all of our procedures. This is especially important to our new folks that I see towards the back of the room. Um, it's very educational. We wanna make sure that everybody's prepared and we hope that when that invitation comes out that you will join us for that training. It's very, very helpful. Okay, fact or fiction. Let's see here. Here's the rumor mill. Okay, here's a rumor. Amanda brought this one up. So, don't reach out to Amanda. If you talk to her, she's going to put you in the assisted living. Right? Fact or Is that fact or fiction? What was that? Can, can you say it one more time? It's fiction. So, 
So Amanda, would you just clarify on that rumor for us a little bit? Absolutely. So I really wanted to include this. So I've been in this role since December, and I've heard this a few times. So one of the many benefits of my role is that I get to meet you all, meet you where you're at, listen to your concerns and what your goals are. So we can then help connect you to whatever resources that you maybe want to connect with at Morgan's Park or even in the community. So um, my goal in this role is to build relationships with you all so you feel comfortable sharing um, how we can continue that successful aging process in your home. So it is absolutely fiction and please don't hesitate to reach out or we want you to feel comfortable sharing what your needs are and we're here to help. So that's one of the best parts about my role. So thank you, Jordan, for putting that in there. So spread the word. Yeah, please do. <laughs> Amanda is all about finding solutions. That's really what her role is about. So, thanks, Amanda. Okay, request response. Please address the new flowers that have not survived. Now, you all know probably that we just recently rotated our flowers in a number of the beds throughout the, the community, and uh, some of them have just failed. So I just want you to know we're on it. We have communicated with Crawford Landscaping. They will be warrantying those flowers. I'm sorry that it's happened. Um, they're a little small now, but these pentas, they will fill out very quickly, especially when the rains come. So we'll have um, plenty of color and replacements soon. Okay, and then my final request response is a little bit different because I'm the one requesting um, rather than the residents this time. So my request to you is, Please complete your satisfaction survey. Now, why do I say this? You've probably gotten a couple uh, memos by now, but we only received 100 responses. And that's, that's not very many. And I think, I'm trying to think, you know, well, why is this? Why is it happening this way? Well, maybe you're thinking it's one survey per household, but that's not true. We, it's one survey per individual. So if you have not completed your satisfaction survey, please, please, please complete it. Here's the challenge. You only have today. So for those of you who are procrastinators in school or college and you stayed up all night trying to get your assignments done, this is another example of that. I'm, hope, I'm hoping that you can, uh, <laughs> Boris is raising his hand. That was me. Um, I'm hoping that you'll uh, take a moment to complete that survey. Why do I ask? And I realize it's the last minute at this point. I take this very seriously. Very, very seriously. All the managers in the back of the room can attest to that. We take that data, we extrapolate it, we slice it, we dice it, especially your verbatim comments. When you have the opportunity to write in your comments, we really look closely at that. And we create action plans and we create programming, we work on solutions, and honestly, this is all for you. This is all directly benefiting you. So um, 100 uh, we, uh, survey responses is, is not what I was hoping for. I was hoping for way more, and if you haven't done it, um, please, 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 if you'll head on back and knock it out. How long did it take for those of you who completed it? Five minutes? Five, 10 minutes? So if anybody has not received it and they need it, if you'll talk to Teresa, uh, maybe she can help you. But I'm telling you right now, it's in your email inbox. Uh, the information is, uh, came to you in the format of a memo. And from me, it's probably the last memo that you've received. So please, if you could. As of tomorrow, it's, it's all shut down. But, and for those of you who did it, thank you so much. We will take that info and we will use it for positive change. Yay. Oh, this was your response. See, we do, we always do the resident request and then the management re response. So we have the management request and here's the resident response. Yay. We love surveys. We live for surveys. <laughs> okay. Last but not least, we have Jessica Brinker with the Nookstone and Mangrove update. First of all, we would all count our blessings to move into the assisted living because it is fantastic. So, Amanda, although that is not her role, but I won't get on my soapbox, but we are amazing. We have an amazing care team. We have amazing programmers. You know, I just wanted to touch on what Brett said. Him and his team do a fantastic job on third and fourth floor. 
He makes sure to go over and beyond for you all, for our residents upstairs to really make a difference. So I'll be so lucky. Just some updates. I know that you received Jordan's memo and I am so thrilled that we promoted our director of nursing, Andrew McCartney, to the new administrator. Yay! You know, Andrew has been with us for the past three years. He has relationships and bonds with our residents, our family members, and the care team, which we have no turnover in. Um, and so I, a thousand pounds was lifted off my chest when Jordan told me who he picked. So I'm so excited and I know he's going to do a phenomenal job. With that being said, uh, his position we are actively looking for. So we are um, pursuing internal candidates. We're looking outside. We're going to make sure we get the perfect fit. And so we are in the process of doing that right now. And I just wanted to give you an update on what success we've had. You know, we have really, truly been on a lockdown for the past uh, 13 months upstairs. And just this past month, we have allowed in-room visits for our residents. And it has made, I could cry talking about it, such a difference. Not only for the families, they get to meet in their residence uh, private apartment. They can stay for whatever length of time. So now that we can safely have these in-room visits, it has made such a tremendous impact. So we are so excited and we just look forward to uh, the community continuing to open up more. And that's all I have. Okay, stay up here. Jessica, stay up here. Uh, if we can open those doors, staff, if you could go help out. All right, now, you may not know this, but today is Jessica's last open forum. And so we thought that we should celebrate because Jessica is, has been promoted. She will become the Associate Executive Director for Moorings Park at Grand Lake, which is a huge promotion and it's so well deserved. Now we thought we would celebrate with two of Jessica's favorite things. Champagne and cupcakes. Yay! <laughs> so, Jessica, come here. Come here. Come here. Jessica helped to open this community. She has spent countless hours here. Oh, wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till the champagne gets dispersed. Now, we're going to do a toast. We're going to do a toast, so if you'll just hold off one moment. Look at his shell. You've done this before. Boris, always a professional. So I would just like to invite everybody to join me in a toast to Jessica. I just want to say she has done so much for this community. She helped to open it. She's been through Irma. She's, just, she's, op she's opened the assisted living. We've gone from very low occupancy to full occupancy. We've gone to n from no team to a team that won't leave. They're just so happy to be here. And she has affected the culture in so many different ways. We are so pleased, so proud. So honored to have worked with you, and we're so excited for the future and what you'll do within the organization. This is a well-deserved promotion. Our loss is Grand Lakes gain, and I think everybody would agree that we're so pleased and happy for her. So I just want to toast Jessica to the future, which is so bright for you. So thank you for everything. Cheers. <laughs> thank you, Jessica. She said, don't make me talk. <laughs> don't make me talk. Oh, I knew she would. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't know that this was going to happen. <laughs> um, you know, I've had the honor to work for Moorings Park for the past 12 years. Uh, the foundation is what put me through school. Coming from an, as an intern from FGCU, so, you know, I couldn't be where I am today without each and every single person in this room, without your mentorship, without your dedication without your kind words, without your firm words. I could not be where I am today. I am so blessed uh, to continue to grow our family. Thank you.
folks. Um, do we really want to do question and answer after this? <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I tell you what, if you have any questions, we can cover them at Java with Jordan next week. How does that sound? And in, is that okay? Oh, well, we can't do that at Java with Jordan. All right. Mr. Emery, we have a question. About the work that's going to be done in the estuary. Um, those of us who live in the northern four buildings, which are really adjacent to the estuary, um, we'd really like to request that the work does not begin real, real early in the morning. Please, that would be. So if um, it's not a question, it's a statement. <laughs> so thank you. And I just want to know, on Mother's Day, is there going to be dinner served that night? Yeah, here. Just 12 to 3, so there's no dinner service Mother's Day evening. I think part of that request comes from there's a number of our apartment buildings that are literally on the parking lot. So it makes some sense. Any other questions for? Oh, if you'd announced you were going to serve a glass of champagne. <laughs> you know, there's a reason why he's leading the food and beverage committee, Gary. <laughs> That's. <laughs> Okay, well, I think, folks, that's a wrap. But on the way out, we do have some lovely cupcakes. Uh, we hope that you'll take one and enjoy. And if you have a moment to say a few kind words to Jessica, I hope that you'll take that opportunity. Um, she'll be with us for, the, for another month or so, but we thought we, we have to do it while we're in front of the residence. So thank you all for a wonderful meeting. And hopefully I'll see you at Java with Jordan next week. Okay.